public awareness and knowledge about what happened in Uttar Pradesh. I think it has a relevance uh, for the future of the country, the way our politics is going, the way our democracy is functioning. Uh, do you think it's going to have some sensational facts which are really going to be uh, stirring up some hornet's nest? Well, I'm going to be telling the truth. I'm going to make available information uh, which was not available to the public uh, and that was the reason why a distorted picture had been presented and I think it is only fair uh, that uh, the distortion should be removed and that, that the people judge because there are many very fundamental issues which are uh, which are there which came up in what has happened in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, first of all more than anything else it uh, does reflect the depths to which uh, our morals and our ethics and politics has sunk and what are the types of things that happen. The whole question of uh, whether a fraud is not being committed on our electorate by representatives uh, the voter elects and uh, what the parties do in regard to their manifestos on the basis of which they get their votes. It's a very major issue which, to which we all have to give our collective thought. This book uh, is specifically on your period as the UP government? It is specifically on that, uh, that period, but it does have some flashbacks quite clearly. And this is also uh, an opportunity I've taken to uh, refer to all the controversies and to really show how terribly frivolous in some cases totally unfounded they have been and how just for whatever purposes uh, a person is just uh, given a given a particular label is it like you give a dog a ba bad name and then hang him huh? so is this book in defense of your own position partly it is in defense of my position partly it is uh, giving information and uh, i have taken the liberty of also giving my views uh, in regard to particular situations because they, I feel, uh, have a bearing upon uh, the consideration or appreciation as in the way in which uh, politics is moving. We are in the e era of coalitions and we can see how that is affecting governance as such and Uttar Pradesh has been a very classic example and we could learn from it. Would you label your book as sensational? I hope uh, uh, it is not sensational uh, because I have not gone into any of uh, type of filth and dirt, no. I have just bared whatever facts were there. But I would really say that this book is supposed to be uh, one which uh, anybody who is really interested to know what is happening with our politics uh, should know about, should read it. And it would be a matter which concerns each and every one because we are all voters and therefore are concerned about the future of our country. Now, uh, a great deal was made about uh, my dismissing the Kalyan Singh government on the 21st of February this year. Uh, I've given all, all that there is in my book, but let me just give you a legal judgment by Justice Raza. The governor cannot be called upon to answer to this court as to why he dismissed the Council of Ministers headed by Shri Mulayam Singh Yadav and called Kumari Mayavati to form the ministry and how he arrived at his satisfaction. Whether the governor was justified or not in dismissing Shri Mulayam Singh Yadav and appointing Kumari Mayavati as the chief minister cannot be determined by this court. This court cannot sit in judgment on the political assessment of the governor. The governor enjoys an immunity under Article 361 of the Constitution of India and no writ or direction can be issued to him against his actions. Uh, speaking in the Lok Sabha on the 3rd of June 1995, Shri L.K. Advani said, You must bear in mind that at least the people of India know that continuance of the Mulayam Singh government after the withdrawal of support of the BSP and promise of support by BJP to BSP is a political offence and is against the constitution. This is exactly the situation when I was obliged 
to dismiss Kalyan Singh, who had lost his majority and was in a minority. 1995 was one position, 1998, the same leaders took the totally the opposite decision. What happened on the 21st October 1997 in Lucknow was, in my view, the biggest fraud that could have been committed by elected representatives on the electorate that voted them to be their representatives. MLAs from the Congress I, the Bahujan Samaj Party and the Janta Dal had split and supported the BJP. All the defecting MLAs had secured their mandate on a major platform, namely that of secularism and being anti-BJP. The main rivals in the elections had been the BJP candidates. For such MLAs to quit their parties and then to support their main enemy, the BJP, is in my estimation a betrayal of the electorate.